Very welcome to our Congress, Consciousness, Being Yourself. Today we are guests of Rolf Holstein. Thank you very much and welcome. Rolf Holstein is a trained graphic designer and a teacher for drawing. And he is today graphic designer and artist. He also studied calligraphy in his life and also engaged in sculpting and he has traveled a lot. Colors are very important to him and today he is mainly doing abstract art. Furthermore, he has a lot of shamanic experience and education, which is also an integral element of his life. My first question to you, Rolf, is what does consciousness mean to you, being yourself? Well, I was thinking about which word to emphasize here. But to me, it is about being aware of myself as often as possible, my body and body needs, those emotions which I understand. And theoretically, it would be good to be constantly aware of yourself. But of course, practically, in reality, this is only possible uh, in a fragmented way. Being yourself means to feel yourself and to be aware of yourself. More and more also to be in proximity, in contact with yourself. What have been your experiences or the inputs and intuitions to you that have led you to become an abstract artist from initially being a graphic designer? It was a path, of course. When I began painting as a young adult, I mainly painted landscapes. I was walking around with a satchel and a small chair until I found something. I portrayed people, particularly musicians, which is a very special experience. People who make music are, in a wonderful way, within themselves. And I only had to draw this again. But at some point there came an impulse to abstract. I can't precisely say when and how, surely across a certain period of time, forward and backward. And even now there are things which I paint in a more figurative way. If I do a bird portrait, the degree of abstraction is much less pronounced compared to other pictures which are ultimately only color and form and where one might only guess the original idea behind it. You mentioned color and form. What do colors mean to you? There is a peculiar energy. I know somebody who even says that colors are spiritual beings. I have felt that when, for a time, I dedicated myself more to sculpting, that there was somehow a feeling or a pressure emerging in my belly, that color wants to enter a picture through me. And in the beginning, when I followed that feeling, I painted pictures where the idea was, it must be blue, it must be red. And when a picture was finished, a new feeling or pressure would emerge, that there should now be something yellow created. And the form at that point was still a little secondary. There were often vertically or horizontally panelled canvases. Do you feel that necessity to express yourself with something in other areas of your life, outside of art, other than painting? Yes, I do know this. There was a time when I was a young man where it was a little unclear to me whether I would want to become a visual artist or professional musician. I had a strong affinity to flutes of all kinds, but I think I have taken the right path. Yes, I also believe that when one looks at your pictures, they also radiate something quite calming through their structure. Yes, calm is a word which has its place in my life. How do you achieve inner calm? as I can only express to the outside something that is already happening within me. One might expect that I would say now through meditation, contemplation, 
And the truth is, I cannot meditate. I am not a person who likes to sit still. I am, on the contrary, someone who feels the need to do something with my hands. Even if it is painting aimlessly, it, it nourishes me somehow to do something with my hands. And I could imagine, because I give into this, and because I have the awareness, I am a handicraftsman, not a city craftsman, that there is a certain calm to that and growing out of it. So through being intensely engaged in something very particular, for instance, when you are painting, would you say that through this being engaged, one can foster centeredness or inner calm? Yes, that's right. I am somebody who, if I want to present something, needs to write this down and elaborate. Only then does it force me to finish the thinking process. If I prepare something only in my head, one misses the details and I like things being fully elaborated. You said that you as a young man were often outside in nature. What does nature mean to you? Well, joy and fulfillment, aside from wonderful impressions which I take in, I am now, for instance, active in photographing many trees, simply because I am interested how different trees grow in different ways. Here, for instance, with different tree species, the angles of the branches and how they spread from the main trunk are again and again different from each other. This leads to the specific character of a tree, and I currently feel almost drunk when I walk around a little just outside the house and see the diversity. And this grips me and I want to somehow bring this into my painting. It grips me. What are those topics that grip you? Which you want to express and show the people by means of pictures or photographs? One of the topics is interesting color compositions. For instance, my daughter once appeared at a meeting in a light brown dress while wearing a purple scarf. Light brown and purple. I subsequently had to do a painting which emanated from this. This kind of made itself independent. It further called for yellow and pink. But the start was brown and purple. And so I come upon, when I stroll around, without going for all kinds of impressions. An old fence where the different slats have different shades of green. And then a little plate from the waterworks with technical information in blue. I photographed that and many pictures developed out of that, emanating from this palette ranging from blue to green, yellow green, fur green. I have this here. One moment. I can show this. This is a book which I wrote and published myself. It's called Truve Gefunden, because I find these things. Here you see the fence with its colors, how one can extract the color harmony, and on the other page, different pictures that emanated from that. Here too, pictorial intuition, which maybe calls for a red or a brown or pink, but it goes back to something found. And I find this extremely gripping, simply moving around and seeing something, window shutters, the plasterwork of a house, copper tube, a rain pipe, this composition. It's like a little boy coming along, viewing the world with awe, who also goes through life very consciously. Here I was in the hospital and had from my bed a view onto a construction site where isolation materials lay around in a toxic pink color and then the rain jackets of the workers in a toxic yellow together with the concrete threads and glass threads, all this produced a color composition which led to one of the best pictures I ever painted. It is a gift and also a talent of yours. You go through the world with open eyes. Yes, I really took to doing this. And every little thing is a gift. Every little thing can represent something big. Yes, I can add to this a line from Rilke, in the book of hours of monkish life, a young icon painter was put on his lips the following words, Nothing is too small for me. 
and I love it nonetheless. And I paint it on a golden base, and large, and hold it high, and I know not whom it strips of his soul. That is very beautiful. That has been my painter's credo for decades. And I also find this wonderful that you pay so much attention to detail, how important details really are, because they make the picture as a whole. Also, because you pay so much attention to details, I also want to talk to you about your shamanism, which you engaged in very intensively. What was the reason for you to become engaged in shamanism? You said that meditation has not been your thing. It's been so long that I cannot quite recall why I signed up for a, for a course the first time. Perhaps it was a certain curiosity. The announcement appealed to me. But why it hooked onto me and why I, for many years, put a lot of weight on it and gave a lot of room for it, is because it satisfies the law for the beautiful and the law for nature, because many ceremonies happen outside. The night on the mountain of fear, the night in the grave, these are nature experiences that go beyond simply seeing, which are more about sensing and feeling, and that one can engage in beautiful things. I have built a drum, I have built a ritual pipe, different kinds of rattles, bird whistles, and feathers, which are beautiful anyway and appeal to me. With feathers, I have built different fronds, which are used for rituals, and I have learned to heal with feathers. Although I do not see myself as a healer, but I can initiate healing by means of feathers. You say something very important here. We are not healers, we only initiate. We are instruments to initiate something in another person if that person is ready. What is the power of the feather? I am curious. It is often about feathers of birds of prey. There is an energy in there which grips, which is firm and which isn't a victim. And with this energy one can, in the aura of another person, initiate something of this male aggressiveness in a healthy way. So to initiate something with the feathers, but can you also take something away by means of the feathers when you say grip? I can do this, yes. I use, for example, swan feathers if somebody has a headache to channel it away. And there the message of the feather is more like beauty. Yes, a swan is beautiful and proud. There your sense of harmony kicks in. Right. I also find it wonderful that you, despite everything that has encountered you in life, could retain this sense for beauty. Well, I think this is a central reason why I am incarnated here, that I communicate beauty, beauty that enriches, beauty that touches. Before, with the rituals, you mentioned a ritual on the mountain of fear. You have gone through this ritual yourself, I assume. What help did this ritual give to you for everyday life, to give yourself into fear? Unfortunately, I did not feel fear in the night in the woods, because I was already quite used to it. There was a time when I spent many evenings going to the border of a forest with a sleeping bag and spending the night there. And you have to get used to it. The forest is alive in the night. You hear animals. Once I lay in a clearing when a drove of boars came so close that I heard their breathing without seeing them. This was very close. My heartbeat increased a little. On my treks in the desert, I normally slept outside as well, even if there would have been tents available. I hear in this the deep wisdom that when I make something unknown known to me, then it loses the power to frighten me. This is true, yes. It's never occurred to me this way. What would you recommend to people who are more in the frightened corner, who deal with different kinds of fear? Well, people say that for irrational fears, spiders, snakes, height, narrowness, 
there might only be exposure therapy. I once walked along a small path with a woman who was afraid of spiders, and I caught a small spider and put it in a jar. And she could put the jar on her hands, which to her was already a big leap forward. She then further imagined not to take a jar, but a plastic bag, and put the spider on her hand. Um, what was the question? Dealing with fear, how to dissolve fears in everyday situations. I encourage people in the case of a discussion like that to confront their fears and not to try to run away from them. And I also need to do that as well. I am irrationally afraid to call somebody. I might interrupt something. I want something from that person after all. It is not nice. And there is nothing else than to say now is not a bad time. Now I have to call. It's the same as in the very beginning, you were surely also afraid in the night of the unknown noises until you had the experience that nothing will happen to you. So this was also a good way to dissolve fears. Yes, I already started this when I was around 16, when I on Whit Sunday with my bicycle and tent and for food for two days went up a mountain to camp. On top of it, I heard a screeching sound and, due to overload, five spokes ended up being broken and the wheel of my bicycle was blocked. Where would I spend with Sunday? Here? And I had to go high up, so one usually looks forward to effortlessly drive back down, but no, I had to carry the bicycle back down. But that's a minor matter. At that moment, I was, for the first time, alone at night outside in nature. And I had a book from René Gadi where it said, one should not be bewildered. Mice would be rustling and little branches would be falling down. Everything would be making noise. So I was, in theory, prepared for this, but I ended up standing next to my tent for half the night with my pocket knife open because of a feeling that somebody is sneaking up on me. So I grew out of this by doing it. That's the only way out of this, by simply doing what had been planned. I believe so, yes. There is not much choice anyway, otherwise you remain on the spot, not achieving anything, by being afraid. You have also studied calligraphy. I am coming back to your art which is a very exact form of writing. Yes, during my design training I learned to write nicely in European scripts and could do this so well that I sometimes taught. I had an 80-year-old crane driver as a private student who wanted to write compliments with the quill and little table cards. He learned this from me. But then, during the time when I was moving away from the Christian belief, I arrived at Zen Buddhism and Zen meditation. There I was not successful. It is just not right for me. But with silence and concentration, how the East Asians practice calligraphy, this I wanted to learn. And I had tuition and practiced for many years. I also studied Japanese sword fighting. And then one may believe that this is contradictory, but it is actually the same skills that are being trained, more on a martial level on the one side and more on a spiritual, beautiful level on the other. But being concentrated, waiting, and then with an explosion of energy to deliver either a killing strike or with the brush to bring a symbol to paper this necessitates similar qualities. You said before that you would not want to meditate. I slightly protest. Uh, to, to be concentrated, to do something, to do something from the heart, and not this agitated kind of doing things, is a high form of concentration and meditation. This is true, yes. Impulses can arise from this, ideas or intuitions can be generated. Well, this is also what I am looking for in painting. I do not produce painting after painting, 
after a certain fashion which is later confused with style, but instead I sit down in front of the white canvas and dare to deal with yourself until a picture arises within yourself and wants to be put on the canvas. This is a hard confrontation with your inner self, with your own fears. I cannot do this, I waste time and material, or simply the impatience, I want to do something. No, you wait now until it is clear what wants to arise within you. When I do this, when I look deeply within myself, then I arrive on a level, perhaps the collective subconsciousness. If I can draw something from that, then I get something that also appeals to other people. And that is a kind of meditation. You create a picture, if I understand this correctly, more from the belly out. Yes, but there is also the other side. I see a color composition or I see a play with forms which interests me. When I simply say I will see if I can make a picture out of this, then I am more on the active, more on the doer side. So more rational, more thinking. Well, it does take place in the head, but both thinking and feeling should be involved equally. Everything else really emerges and arises within you, where you are taking the time, practicing patience, so where I do by doing nothing. Yes, it is also the case that when I start something new, that I maybe do not physically sit there, but thinking that there is a white canvas there, I can dally around and tidy up the place, fritter away time, and at that time I had a guilty conscience when I did that. But I know in the meantime, also from other artists, that this is essential to the process. Before you really produce something, there is a time of frittering away, a time of reluctance. Should I? Should I not? What's going on in television? So the usual daily distractions and the time to grow, to let the seeds sprout, I had this picture where I am waiting until something grows and only then will I give form to it. This is actually similar to what we today understand as create your own world. I fritter away and let something be created, something which you would like to spend energy to and where you engage in your inner picture. You have also said that you very much like to be outside. What does your body mean to you? Well, if a body is marked from illnesses and accidents, such as mine, then the body steps to the fore by itself. It hurts here, it hurts there. I have to go to the doctor because of this or that. I need to take physiotherapy, go to the chiropractor, who talks even if I do not ask anything. What are you doing to support your body a little? Are you doing something particular with food or movement? Well, I have been going to the gym for some time in combination with physiotherapy and I take part in a gymnastics group, which is particularly for the back. And if possible, I take part in another group gymnastics group class the same week for older people for flexibility, endurance and strength. And I slowly but increasingly sense that it has some effect. There too something grows. It is somewhat frustrating because in the past the self-healing powers of the body were much greater. Now I am beyond 60 years old and it takes much more time. Concerning food, what you asked, my diet is relatively common. I integrated a few Ayurvedic principles, but I cannot really cook the Ayurvedic way or do it very consistently. Unfortunately, I like sweet things. The sweetness of life is also important. Yes, but my belly, or rather my view of my belly, tells me that I need to cut back on this. 
And I also pay attention not to eat uh, ready-to-eat foods, better just a simple salad. But pleasure is still something that belongs to your life. Oh yes. You cannot open yourself to beauty in such a way and then not enjoy it. This may also be. What does it mean to you to take other people the way they are, to develop this tolerance? You have had such experiences. What has developed within you? It is a more comfortable life not to be annoyed about the neighbors, about friends who might not do something the way that I would imagine. I have developed a great deal of understanding towards other people and maybe it is also connected to the fact that I, over many years, consistently blessed people I met, within me even spoken aloud, in particular people who visibly suffered, handicapped people, people having fights with each other. I blessed them routinely and then moved on. And maybe that was practice for me to accept something the way it is. When I bless something, I cannot condemn or be judgmental about it. So judging or condemnation has somewhat disappeared from your life. Yes, it also creates a connection. Often there is an urge to retreat from handicapped people, say, and it creates a bridge when I bless a person within me. There is also a law for people present if I can bless someone. Yes, interestingly, I have learned this law for people in shamanism, namely through addressing the four worlds, the mineral world, the plant world, the animal world and the human world. And I felt at the beginning of that practice that I was particularly troubled with the human world. And this has balanced out. It is such that most injuries have been caused by humans, which we have stored within ourselves. The fear to lose in front of the other one. If I take the other person the way he is, I am no longer afraid of him and his reactions. And it is this which you have strengthened within yourself through shamanism. It is about saying, this is my sensual perception in the face of me and my life. And you have said wonderful things about your pictures, about the colors, about perceiving about going through life with open eyes and to keep the inner child awake, that it may show itself time and time again. And for this, I thank you very much. Do you still have a question? No, I have not said anything so far and only listened, captivated. Yes, I thank you very much for this discussion and thank you for watching. And to you, may you continue to have much joy in expressing through color from this wonderful living world. Thank you very much. Thank you.